This is 191st day of the Ukrainian resistance. My name is Vasil Simakhvalov. Today we are talking to the Minister of Culture, Information, Policy of Ukraine, Mr. Alexander Tkachenko. Welcome. Sir, we know that you have come back from a business trip after a agreeing upon a number of important documents. What have you agreed upon? What have you brought back to Ukraine? Over the period of the s time since the war broke out, this is the first time I have gone abroad. We have had a meaningful support of the majority part of the civilized world, including, in the first place, the countries of the European Union. However, the help was coming from Eastern Europe, as such countries as Poland, Lithuania, and Slovakia, in terms of the culture support. So it was important for me to get support from such drivers as Germany and France. The Minister of Culture of Germany have has been to Odessa already, and they have announced a program to support Ukrainian culture and media in the amount of 20 million euro. In Germany, I had an opportunity to get to know what this money has been earmarked for, and uh, we have learned a number of uh, interesting things. For example, Part of the money will be transferred to the Ukrainian journalists staying abroad, and the major part of that will be targeted toward the uh, uh, Russian opposition TV outlets. My question was, what do they have to do with the Ukrainian culture and media? And, and the discussion was very hot. And uh, my German colleagues didn't know what to answer, but we are thankful to our German colleagues for the support of the Ukrainian artists. A lot of cultural steps have been taking place, but our emphasis was that we need a substantially more Im serious support. And I'm sorry, but I feel sorry for the Russian opposition media outlets, but at the same time, I don't really care what their status or their situation is. What I know is that the Ukrainian media are in need of substantial support. The market for the advertisements, for example, have been almost dead. So in our meetings in Germany and in France, we highlighted those parts. For example, the support of the Ukrainian cultural heritage, which is important in view of the winter upcoming. What we want to do is to provide the renovation for the theaters and museums of Ukraine to live through winter time, especially in the city of Kharkiv. We also want to have the support for the cold period in terms of generation, to live through the cold t times. And of course, we have a lot of requests from cultural institutions. We have compiled a list of those needs to know which institution needs that amount of money. The second point that we discussed was the support for the Ukrainian artists staying here in Ukraine. Of course, to support those staying abroad is very important, but 80% of the Ukrainian artists are staying in Ukraine, working in Ukraine. A number of reserves are open in Ukraine. Authors are writing books. Artists are drawing their canvases. The culture is going on, and culture is not only what puts us together and um, rallies us together, but Ukrainians should enjoy the opportunity to receive some other emotions apart from the um, different stressful situations due to what is going on in the front line. So we are talking about the support for the Ukrainian institutions, including the institution of books and book printing, so that in Ukraine we receive the grants and the procedure is well known. This 
calls for a serious amount of money. We also discussed the organization of uh, joint actions together with the French and German colleagues in the form of different concerts or gigs. This is a part of the collaboration as uh, what we did at the Metropolitan Opera between Ukrainian artists and Polish artists and musicians when they played Ukrainian music. And the third aspect is the media support. The urgent amount of money as of now edges somewhere toward the 250 million euro. We are not talking about tomorrow. What we are talking about is today. The situation is more critical and critical by the day. We have been reassured by the German party that Germany as the presiding power in the G7, they will call the meeting of the cultural ministers in terms of the support of the Ukrainian media, where we will lay out our position of what we call a uh, information Rammstein. So that plan includes the resistance to the Russian propaganda. At the same time, you want to know res to have resources to support the Ukrainian media, including independent media, state media, etc. The same talk was held at Paris with the newly appointed Minister of Culture, Rino Malak, and I, my point is that I was positively impressed. It was absolutely specific with a specific action plan on what we are going to do in the near future. Very soon, the French ministry will announce the, their plan to support Ukrainian cinematography. At the same time, we also talked about the additional and urgent needs for Ukraine. What is pleasant here that is that we plan worked on the plan how to specifically play, help Ukrainian institutions. We discussed the issue of cultural seasons in Paris or in Fra France in general amidst other steps to take place in the future directed to aid the Ukrainian sphere of culture and media. It was great that in that sense we have a very serious and reliable friend in the person of the Minister of Culture of France, a country which is part of the G7, and culture is, of course, the epitome of the role and high role of culture that they have in the world. I also met the Director General of UNESCO, Audrey Azoulay, and uh, at that meeting I had a number of positive impressions. We all know that UNESCO is a bureaucratic organization. Having said that, we saw an absolute readiness to take specific steps. On Tuesday, we will have a uh, Zoom meeting with the direct uh, general deputy. As for the immediate needs in terms of protecting Ukrainian heritage, we will also be discussing the increase of uh, support because, you know, UNESCO deals not only with culture, including the media, for example. We'll be talking about the plans of the so-called the mode of uh, emergency situation that can be applied by UNESCO in case of Ukraine. We have put together a team from UNESCO. I have been reassured by them that there will be a special contact person dealing with the Ukrainian issues here in the UNESCO office in Kyiv. We also discussed a question of immediate introduction on um, Odessa dossier to go through the procedure, the extraordinary procedure through UNESCO to enlist the downtown of Odessa into the World Heritage List. The dossier is now being finished, and very soon it will be delivered to the Paris office of UNESCO, and I have been reassured that this will be processed immediately. So we have an understanding, which is important, on a separate note, is something that I discussed with my Polish friend, Mr. Petro Glinski, the Vice Prime Minister of Poland. 
And I mentioned that the urgency of the cultural issue and the media of Ukraine should be put on a higher level, not only in the EU, and this is what we are working on in the upcoming and nearest future. It is time to go th to walk the walk and talk the talk. There are expectations that there will be specific steps taken, not the day after tomorrow, but rather tomorrow in general. That seems to have exhausted the point that I wanted to clarify. Do we have questions from the floor? Ukraine Forum. One of the questions deals with the international aid, and this is, have you been distributing the aid that Ukraine has received from Eastern European countries, or you have been um, accumulating money to spend on the central issues, including the winter period? And if there are priorities, what did you spend the money on? The second question that we are all searching for the answer, what is the vision of how to get rid of the Russian narratives in, in Europe? The Jordan concert in Italy, of, of course it is good. It draws attention to the Ukrainian question. It helps Ukrainian army. But it's not a point of imposing Ukrainian values onto Europe, and we are not trying to grasp some cultural sites. Now, how have we been receiving East money? It was directly, rec we received it directly from some institutions, for example, different fireproof fabrics or wainscots, and we receive that money from, from France, and we distribute that. This is not a matter of accumulating money by the ministry. Only the Polish part the Lith gives us money. Lithuanian um, government helped us with uh, material. The Slovakian party uh, country helps us to host Ukrainian artists. It's not a financial need. And some people are saying that you have received money, haven't you? And I am saying that we are now tracking down the efficiency of the aid that we have received in our conversation with our partners. We stress the importance of the help to particular institutions and um, the money that we receive through United24 Platforms. So what I'm saying is that there are two platforms that are running in parallel. As for the Russian narratives, this is what I was discussing with my German colleagues. I was saying that there, are n there is no difference between good or bad Russians. As we are talking about the ban on visas, there is also a point of humanitarian need. The whole discussion about the ban visa for Russians is that according to our data, about 600, 700 uh, cultural figures that left Russia, uh, compare that with the number of Ukrainians that fled the war. This is why we discussed that point, and we also talked about the notion of canceling Russian culture, because that canceling of Russian culture will be in place until and unless they re withdraw from Ukrainian territory, because war and their armed forces is part and parcel of the Russian narrative and propaganda. As for the cultural acts, of course, they must be supported, but collaboration is the key phrase here. And why is it? Because joint ventures with the German and French institutions will allow us to point to raise the awareness of the Ukrainian culture. It's not a matter of a specific artist or musician. It's a matter of being part and parcel of the world culture. And of course, what happened to Mr. Jordan and his uh, gig, I think it has, uh, has to be discussed with our Italian partners. More questions from the floor, please. French support of cinematographers. And I was wondering if you could talk about 
other support? Is that is that support specifically for one trade within the film industry, or has there been support for the entire Ukraine uh, uh, film uh, industry? I have been told about decisions they made. They didn't announce it, this oh. decision, yet. So it's only what I got information from them that these decisions they will announce soon. Uh, but if we're speaking about different types of support, that's three areas which I mentioned. One is uh, assistance to preserve Ukrainian culture heritage. Another one is to assist, uh, to assist Ukrainian artists and people from creative industries uh, through such institutions as Ukrainian Culture Fund and Ukrainian Book Institute. So it's financing through grants. Money can come from uh, France, for example, to these institutions, and according to existing procedure, grants will be spread among independent artists and uh, institutions. The same is with Book Institute. And third direction is about assistance to Ukrainian media in different forms. But those which are working in Ukraine, which continue to work and unfortunately are now facing and suffering uh, from uh, ad advertisement market collapse, uh, from 70 to 90 percent in different spheres, uh, but they continue to work. And they somehow need to get financing, uh, not to continue cutting jobs. Uh, they are really in front, on, on the front line of informational war. So that's three areas of needs which we discussed, and uh, I wouldn't go to details right now, but what is uh, good with France is that we understand uh, algorithms and mechanisms, uh, how we can uh, attract this money, how it can be used. Uh, second question, you mentioned support from Germany, France, Poland, Slovakia, anything from the US for the arts? Uh, uh, yes, there are a lot of support coming through USAID in different spheres. It goes directly to institutions or individuals right now. Uh, but we discussed twice with Lee Sasserfield, uh, the Deputy uh, Secretary of State, a uh, concrete plan of actions for Ukrainian uh, culture and media. And now we're finalizing uh, the plan, concrete plan, of additional assist assistance to this fair. So we also have a quite good understanding uh, with the ES. Vitaio. <coughs> I have a question about the Bolhako Museum. Would you introduce yourself? So, Spilne Molina Outlet. There has been suggestion to close down the museum by Bolhako and instead open another museum of Alexander Koshetia. Do you think there is a reason for the unit of the writers to initiate such a move. I was flagger-bested by the suggestion of the Union of Writers. I don't know what is it that they are not happy with. Bulgakov was born in Kiev. In some of his works, artistic works, I underline artistic words, some words mouthed by his characters about the Ukrainian movement of liberation at the beginning of the 20th century, but I don't think that the museum is guilty of anything. Neither the museum nor the monument are guilty. I think that the writers have something to do else beyond the museum of Bulgakov. My position is this, you should not touch that museum. If there are no more questions, I will take the floor. We've been talking about money. What I was saying, again, there are three questions, money and money and third, money. We talked about money indeed. The budgetary process is now being launched. What are the expectations? What do you want? What do you want to receive from the state budget? And in this realm, how the information rhymes time will be helpful. The Ministry of Finances is talking constantly about shortage of money. I don't think there will be a better situation. We should be ready to cut down everywhere, including the cultural sphere. This is why our Western 
friends aid is important the cultural front the informational front during the war time is very important as for the informational Rheinstein in Europe and in America my colleagues agree that the number of initiatives and specific actions in countering disinformation is very important but there is no exchange of information on or some bureau or a permanent or standing committee or system that would immediately respond to the challenges faced by the civilized world. Of course, we have centers of uh, fighting disinformation that verifies some information provided by the Ru by Russian Federation. But the second point, and I am not ashamed of that, money is important. Money is important for the Ukrainian media. Another issue, the cultural front in the occupied territories where the Russians have done, have come into, and they are talking about the gap between our children and their children. They are now introducing the so-called lessons of truth, bringing artists. How do you think we should oppose that? We should keep contact with those people, with the children that are now staying in the temporarily occupied territories. We should enjoy the opportunity to share the information with them and delivering information to them through Telegram, through VPN procedures. There is a good news here. We are working on a very exciting project with our British colleagues that will empower us in increasing the possibility to send this signal to the temporarily occupied territories. Once that project is up and running, we will inform you about that. Thank you very much. Once the questions have been expired, we will wrap up. Our guest has been Mr. Tkachenko, the Minister for Information and Culture of Ukraine. Thank you very much.